Let's call the committee to hold to order Tuesday, the 11th of April, 2006, right at um, 6.07 p.m. Councilwoman Bell is present. Councilwoman Wallman and Councilman Porter are present this evening. Vice Mayor Laws is in Washington, D.C. And Councilman Hodge and Councilwoman Garner is in Washington, D.C. with the Mayor's Youth Group. And I'm sure they're having a wonderful time. All right, um, March the 28th, 2006, minutes, committed to own minutes. Is that motion for approval? I'll move them. Moved by Councilman Bills. A second? Second, Mayor. Second by Councilman Port. Any questions on the March 28th minutes? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The manager said we're going to defer um, PowerPoint presentation by Global Integration Home Port. Um, 2C is the commercial property coverage. Power Plant Resolution, tab 2. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, uh, we have our insurance broker, Tom Jones, here to explain actually uh, tab two and tab three related to property insurance renewal. Good. Tom? Yes, if, if good. Thank you, Tom. The Mayor, members of the Council. <coughs> Turn it on, Tom. I don't know how closely you follow what's going on. Uh, uh. Is that on? Okay. Yes, that is on. Uh, I don't know how close you've been following what's been going on in the insurance market, but uh, it's a very interesting, a very trying market. I uh, work very closely with uh, Marcy Heath and Priscilla Thompson and your consultant, Cyber Associates, uh, on this renewal. In essence, what we've got broken down here is in what we call the non-power plant and the stadium or the sports complex uh, uh, proposal. You have property values of, I want to abbreviate here, 65 million. Last year increased to 73 million this year, which is a 12% uh, in, increase uh, in values. And on the premium side, You had a rate of 58 cents that went to a rate of 85 cents per hundred, and a premium that went from 383, 383,000 to 683,000. Um, when you consider the how, well, let me let me back up a minute on that. There's one change in the program that I think is important to talk about. I had some conversation with uh, Ms. Thompson on this, and that is your deductible. Last year you had a flat $1 million deductible. This year you have a 5% deductible with a minimum of $1 million. What that means is on a, uh, any given loss, in essence, the city is going to pay the first 5% of the windstorm, and that 5% applies to windstorm only. You're going to pay the first 5% of the windstorm loss before the carrier is going to pay anything. Um, you've got roughly, if you want to look at this from a global standpoint, you've got roughly $70 million in values on the non-power plant and the stadium complex policy. So everything were damaged. And you would have 5% of that $70 million or roughly $3.5 million of deductible before the carrier is going to pay. Uh, Marcia, do you want more examples than that? I, okay. Any comments? No, Mayor. Now, there's a point on the this aspect of the coverage which we basically copied from the power plant proposal, the power plant program that we did last year. And that is, we have roughly 70 million, actually 73 million dollars of property values. We have 20 million dollars of windstorm coverage. So that if you look at it or consider it this way, there's a 20 million dollar windstorm sublimit. So if you can compare a situation where you, every building in the city burned down by fire, you'd have roughly 70 million dollars in losses and 70 million dollars in coverage. 
if every building in the city blew down because of windstorm, you get $20 million of windstorm coverage. That number was selected based on Andrew experience. It's very hard for me to envision a windstorm scenario worse than Andrew. Um, your Andrew claim was less than $15 million and we've got uh, $20 million of coverage. If you wanted to purchase another $5 million of coverage, which would sit on top of that 20, if you can visualize that, you've got a layered program here with Lexington on the bottom um, and, and carriers that are building, two other carriers that are building it that limit up to 20 million. You could buy another 5 million, which would give you $25 million of windstorm for $75,000. I'm not real concerned about your need to do that, but it was something that was discussed in the, in the presentation and we were asked to get that optional quote. I don't know if uh, Ms. Heath has a comment that she wants to make on that or the, or the city manager, but um, when you, if you want to kind of set that aside, if you'll think about the power plant for a moment now, where you have $50 million worth of coverage, for, excuse me, $50 million worth of values, $45 million worth of coverage, and a sublimit on wind for $15 million, You've got $15 million at the power plant and $20 million for all of the other city properties, which is a total of 35, which is more than double what your Andrew loss was. Um, I'm not particularly concerned about the need to buy more than that. Now, I've perhaps jumped into the next tab, which is a power plant, and, and just to re reiterate that, your actual, your actual values there are a little bit over 51 million. The, the coverage is 45 million. The uh, windstorm limit is 15 million. And your deductible there is 3% of the values in any one location. And if you had damage at all the locations, you'd be roughly speaking 3% of 50 million or a million and a half dollar uh, deductible on the windstorm before the carrier would pay. The 3% deductible is very attractive. We were seeing 5% uh, in about 90% of the cases, 5% deductible, and in the other cases we're seeing deductibles higher than that. I have a quick question. Now, I don't know if I've confused you or hopefully made this clear. Ms. Wilman? I think I understand. But I have a question. Sure. Um, terrorism. Do We've included the terrorism coverage uh, in this proposal. And how much coverage? The, the premium for that is... And it's included in this, it's correct? A, yeah. It is a... They break out the charge. It's about $60,000, but I am not at the moment putting my finger on the page. That's all the coverage we have, in other words? No, the premium is $60,000. It's premium is $60,000. And what that is saying is that your policy will respond in the event you have a certified act of terrorism. Um, uh, very hard to predict. I, I, the reason I'm asking you this, the situation right now that, that they're dealing with at Turkey Point you know, obviously they think that, that, I mean, just from the news, that obviously there's question as to whether or not it was uh, deliberately done because of the reward out, you know, for people to, to tell them who, who they think did it. Um, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is what if something like that happened to where, you know, we had um, reason to believe, Mr. Parsons, <laughs> we had reason to believe that something had deliberately been done to uh, hamper our services or to destroy one of some of our equipment. What kind of coverage do we have for that? Okay, it would, be, it would need to be damage to insured property caused by a certified event and the federal government determines that. So what would happen, I assume that what's happening in the Turkey Point case is they're submitting it to the federal government saying, is this an act of terrorism? And I would assume that Turkey Point uh, has purchased that coverage. Yeah, but that's covered under our. That's program. covered under your program. Well. That's an optional. Pro that's an optional coverage. You could elect not to. And what's our deductible on that? Um, 
very good question. I may have put you on the spot. Uh, it's just that, unfortunately, we have to think like that today. I'm embarrassed to tell you, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get. That's okay, Tom. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's all right. But I will, I'll get the answer to, uh, mm -hmm. to Ms. Hughes. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I hate to think like that, but I have to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you. On, on the values, um, um, Marcy, are these from the audit? These are the value numbers from? Yeah. The property values are based on um, Mr. Jones meeting with each of the department directors in, around the city and are um, reviewed to determine the current value. In fact, one of the items we'll be doing after this, um, prior to the, probably the end of September, is having an independent appraisal uh, firm that, uh, through the company that will evaluate whether or not our property values are accurate and at the correct level because of the assessed values going up so much. The property values increasing so much this past year, we want to make sure that we're assessing and ensuring at the proper value. I, I think that's a very good measure. I, it is possible that during Oli Pearson's tenure as city manager, you may have had an appraisal done. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> so I don't think it's happened since then. So I, I wholeheartedly recommend that. Yeah, as I look at some of these numbers, I just worry, worry about whether the values are mm -hmm. adequate. But I'll have to support yeah. staff. May I have a question? Staff recommendation, uh, Ms. Will. Tom, thank you for um, informing us on this. I did have some questions. Sure. But as far as the increase, I mean, we've all been experiencing these um, astronomical increases, but are we going to be able to hold the line? Because the biggest jump, of course, we've seen is the commercial property coverage except the power plant, and the smallest percentage of this was on the terrorism side and on the power right. plant side. Where we're really getting killed is on the windstorm. Um, are we going to see some relief in the coming years? Well, I, will, I will give you my prediction, and then Ms. Heath may give you her predict not her prediction, but your consultant's consideration for budgetary purposes. It's my um, opinion that if we do not have a terrible season, in other words, a repeat of multiple storms, four storms or more, $100 billion in losses, that we will see a um, mitigation of the increases. Will we see decreases? I'm not sure about that. But one thing that's very positive is I, uh, last month I visited about 30 reinsurance companies, New York, Bermuda, and uh, London. Fortunately, the carriers in Bermuda recapitalized with about $10 billion of, of money to pay for the losses that they incurred during the, this past 05 hurricane season. There's an additional $10 billion of money that's in Bermuda for additional capacity. The unfortunate thing is the large stock insurance companies, some of which are your carriers, uh, Lexington's one of the AIG companies, they are now buying substantially more reinsurance, so they're very quickly absorbing that additional capacity. But the, the, the positive of that is with that much new capital in the, in the industry, without a terrible year this year, they're going to be fighting for premium, and I think you're going to see some moderation in the, in the premiums next year. Now, for budgetary purposes, there's a number that's been suggested that you ought to consider another increase of 40%. Now, I would say that's very conservative, and I don't think it's going to be 40%. However, if we have another year like 05, it, it, it might be more than 40%, and you might have cases where you simply can't buy the coverage because there's not enough capacity out there. On the case of the windstorm, we made a decision not to buy full windstorm limits because it was just too expensive. So it's it's a uh, it's very interesting times right now. Thanks. Thank but, you very much. On a point on your question about premiums, if you looked at your overall premium increase, it's about a 53 percent increase. Right. right. However, 6.84 percent of that is the citizen surcharge to replenish citizens. They are basically out of money. 12.3 percent of that was the property value increase on the non-power plan and the stadium policy. So if you back those two items out. 
your increase was about 33 percent, which is still a high percentage, but far better than many other municipalities are uh, seeing. And um, I believe that uh, your consultant uh, said uh, that as well. And hopefully next year we all won't be pitching in towards citizens as well as paying for our own insurance. I pay a citizen's premium. I'm not very happy about it. Yeah, none of us are. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Mr. Mayor, Mayor you, could, you could take both these could items take together. both at one time? Um, is that a, a motion to yeah. approve C and D, um, Councilwoman Bill? Yes. A second. Second by Councilwoman Wallman. Any additional questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Tom. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <coughs> Item 2E is the State of Florida Department of Transportation, tab 4. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, it's staff recommendation that City Council authorize us, uh, staff, or this, to uh, represent the city in a joint uh, participation agreement with the State of Florida and the Transportation uh, for an Emergency Relief Program with the um, <clears throat> Federal Highway Administration. We have up to, working with them, we claimed up to 4355000 for claims in the cleanup for Katrina and Wilma. These are two <clears throat> that are combined. And to get this reimbursement, uh, we have to enter into a joint uh, participation agreement. I'll move that. 4.355. Five, five. Good. Moved by Councilman Bell. Is a second? Second. Second question. by Councilman Porter. Mr. Porter? No. Is this for repairs? Is it also for repairs of the road infrastructure? There, there is some of that, and we did up to to 4.355. It may not be that much at the end of the day, but if you put in, if you don't put in for enough, you you may lose it. Well, now a lot of the roads that are damaged are county roads. How does all that? Will we use our, Will we use this money on county roads that need to be repaired, or would it be just city streets themselves? Well, actually, I think it would be county as well, but. Uh, yeah, th that would include county roads as well. Basically what this covers is uh, any roadway that is designated by the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, so it's not all the roadways in the city. The rest of the, the bulk of the, of the pickup will be covered by FEMA. What, it, what this is, this is an agreement that the DOT has with FEMA where, FEMA, where, where DOT will pay for those roads that are in, in the list of the Federal Highway and the rest will be covered by FEMA. It's just a split of responsibilities from their end. And in order for us to get the monies back, we need to enter into this uh, joint participation agreement. Would the county be eligible for the same type of program? They're eligible within, outside the city, basically, within their boundaries. So the county roads inside the city would not be covered by an agreement with the county. They would have agreements outside the city. We have to correct our own. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Councilman Roman. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, this is a resolution uh, supporting a grant application that I'm going to ask Rick to take from here, Rick Stoss. Can you talk about it? Rick? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this, this is this is an application for the Florida Communities Trust Program. We applied last year for the same grant. It is a reimbursement request for part of the cost of the property that we bought from Jesse Gooman that we're expanding into Lozner Park. Um, we've done some things to increase our possibility of score, but we're still right on the cusp whether or not we could get the money, which it's a crapshoot really. Uh, because the program is not really designed to do this, though it can, we're pushing the limits of the program in this application. And if we get the money back, it will be a reimbursement of funds that we spent, not expecting to ever get any of it back, so it would be uh, pure gain. If we get it, wonderful. If we don't get it, it's really not that damaging to us. It's money we spent two years ago. Madam Chairman, I'll move the recommendation. Second a motion. Second. Um, moved by Councilman Florida, seconded by Mayor Warren. Um, any questions, comments, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item 
for Public Safety Committee, Councilman Porter. Um, the Chief's not here. Okay. Yeah, I'm just glad Mr. Adams is part of the law enforcement. I was looking for Villaranga. Captain Chung is here. I know. Uh, this is uh, uh, staff and the Homestead PD recommend acceptance of this grant award. It's a Homeland Security grant award for $50,000 from Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, with that money, uh, is what we put in for the grant and requested for the purchase of two police canine uh, with specialized training, for example, explosives. Uh, we also have five web, uh, excuse me, five video uh, assessment systems that will be web-based for surveillance cameras, uh, one mobile electronic computer programmable message board, and uh, there's no match to this grant, so uh, the 50000 is uh, free and clear to us. Much of this was put in uh, to handle things at the racetrack. Now that's it, and that 50000 won't buy all of those items. Well, they didn't indicate. I, uh, I don't didn't indicate to me that they would not. But uh, uh, Randy, did you know in your inquiry well, whether this is it's enough not to purchase good. everything we put in for? I thought the canines were more expensive than that, but yeah, I, I did too when I looked at it. But uh, it's fifty thousand more than we have on the table right now. Move the uh, recommendations. Second. Moved by the mayor. Second by Councilman Walman. Any other discussions? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Any other business, Ms. Bell, for, for this evening? Councilman Roman? Um, I just received a memo, um, which I haven't had time to, to read yet, but um, we are in the process. We have been, um, we have contacted a headhunter regarding the internal auditor's position. I know the mayor's been quite concerned about that, so... Hopefully we'll get I'm getting some. impatient. I know you are. <laughs> I, I feel the blows coming out of the side of my head. Um, I don't know what to do. Um, Marcy, how long have, I mean, we've, you received one person from the headhunter, and, and there was a uh, criminal um, who didn't pass the criminal. Well, we're still in the process of that, um, of clarifying that. Um, the, the problem from what we're hearing from the headhunter, and I'll, I'll be happy to check with another one, this was the one we're using is Robert Half International, and we use them extensively in the two, when we had our financial situation a few years ago, and they were very helpful. That's their field, is accounting, finance, auditing um, background. And um, the industry in this area, internal auditing and tax managers, there's not the people available that are looking for jobs because companies are hanging on to them and increasing their pay to keep them. So there aren't that many that are mobile and out there looking. Um, it isn't even so much as a salary issue. There just aren't that many people out there. Um, we did have a candidate come to us earlier, or late last week, that we've spoken to and we're trying to check out some things on that before we schedule them to come and meet with you all. We wanted to do some background information on them before. But there was uh, something questionable on the resume that, that on the application that puts all kinds of flags up around me, so yes. I doubt it that we'll ever get to council. We are still actively pursuing this. It is still on our website since we posted a job originally last July. We put ads in the paper twice. We, we've had it at the um, Governmental Finance Officers Association uh, website for several months, and um, you know, we, we've only received seven applications altogether, and only three of them were qualified as the qualifications. So. Do we ever put it in, I don't know if it's this paper, but there's one paper, I don't know which what it's called, that has all the jobs posted like throughout the United States. Um, one of these little papers that I get every month. We've done it in the um, in the governmental uh, finance officers and the internal auditors association. Okay. I'll be happy to look at... Um, you know, we'll, we'll put it anywhere to get the experience. Yeah, so sometimes we have these a few jobs that come up that we just can't seem to find, and, and that's why we went to the to the outside company, thinking that they were the ones specializing in this area. And evidently, it's a problem for them as well. And you know, the mayor has stressed over and over and over on the record that the voters voted to have this, you know, in place, and now it's three almost three years and. We, have, we don't have one yet, so... We, well, we posted gone. the job in July last year, so we've been actively looking for someone since July last year when we were directed to do that. 
So, um, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to continue to, to monitor that. And we put it out, like I said, several times over and over. And, and uh, it's been posted on our website continuously. Do we have, um, what's the name of that website? Um, there's a website that for professionals, what's, what's it called? Monster? Monster.com. Monster. I mean, have we put it we on that? that? I mean, that, they, that. They, they have excellent jobs listed on there. I mean, maybe we should do that. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that. When something doesn't work, we've got to do, take a U-turn or a sort of fork in the road and go, go the other way because we definitely need an internal auditor. So thank you okay. very much, Marcy. Okay. Maybe that's my business. Thank you. Mr. Porter? Just one thing real quick, Mr. Mayor. I'd, l I'd like to ask Mike or Julio or... Sherry or the manager, uh, can we take a look at the intersection of the red lights on US 1 and Chrome Avenue and the one on Old Dixie and 15th Street and have the county come in and, and take a look at the sequencing? They're, they're not open up long enough. Traffic is backing up consistently and it's because the signalization is off timing. That's right. And if, if we would just get them down and look at the main intersections on US 1 and Chrome and, and specifically Old Dixie and 15th, maybe they can open these things up remotely, maybe they can come out and give it more time. But I think <clears throat> we've got traffic problems and I think that'll be a positive percentage-wise reduction in some of those some of those issues. So I like to formally request that we do that and get someone from the county to take a look at it because they're responsible but we'll do that if you would i'd appreciate it yes we'll do that thank you thank you mayor that's all I, I forgot one thing and i don't often get a chance to uh thank captain chong when he's in the audience so i want to thank you very much for handling some code violations that were brought to my attention uh, this weekend. Um, although yesterday I saw two more of them, two, there were cars parked on, on the road with, for sale signs, and I know we have a big concern with that down um, on 8th Street and 162nd as well. It comes a used car lot, and we've had other places that Captain Chong, I don't want to divulge the addresses because I don't want anybody putting our cars there, <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, they went right out and handled it, and I thank you very much for that, and I'm afraid that that's becoming more and more prevalent. So anytime you see anything that's not supposed to be where it's supposed to be, call, call Captain Chong. He's great. Code enforcement, good, good work, Councilman Porter, with, uh, with the police department. Mr. Shahara. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council members, just an update. The, we whole yeah, got together with the Public Works Director in the county, and actually they came and did the timing on the movie theater traffic light there. There should be very noticeable improvement. If you experience any delays, please call us again and they will come back and readjust it. Very good. They, they, incre they increased, <laughs> no, no, that was actually a good uh, feedback. So they, they increased the timing where it stays green longer. And they, they came and actually observed to see the people leaving this site. And they were, according to them, they were pleased with the way it was working. I, I had called Mike and thank you very much because there was a nightmare that, that first weekend and thank you. Well, what kind of work they're doing on North Canal? Like they're laying that tra uh, the trans the it's transmission pipe. or the yep, electrical. Uh, Mayor, actually, we are, we are, there's a, there is a distribution circuit on the high bar lines now. They are burying it underground, so they make room for the, uh, the new transmission lines. Okay. Anything, Mr. Manager? Well, one, and uh, I'll probably do this Monday also, I'd like to thank and commend the uh, police department. Uh, working in conjunction with Miami-Dade County and the school board on handling kind of a, a late, a last minute uh, demonstration on reference to immigration. We're having the two high schools come together. Uh, and I'd like to commend the, the students. They did a good job, uh, kept it orderly, behaved, you know, made it focus on the issue and not on behavior uh, subsequent or uh, ancillary to the issue. So they did a very good job there. I think got their point across. It was uh, uh, peaceful, and I think uh, I could say the same thing for Harris Field last night. A report from the officers uh, that uh, no problems whatsoever, and a lot of people. Lot there of was people a lot of people at Harris Field right. yesterday. Yeah. 
<clears throat> but I would like to commend the, uh, the, uh, the police force. They, they did a good job planning, putting things together, and actually handling it. Uh, the ACLU was there with uh, the kids from the high school. They, they were there on site to watch and monitor. Then uh, they um, told me that uh, commended the police for what they did. And, uh, immediately wanted to ask him to go over and talk to her so she we could get that <laughs> get that in print. So uh, they did a good job. I just want to commend them. Okay. Good. Mr. City Attorney, any business? Thank you. Thank you all very much for coming. Meeting is adjourned.